Hello, friends. Welcome to episode 991 of the Juice Box Podcast. Today, I'll be speaking with Ian. He's 32 years old and has had type 1 diabetes since he was 10 years old. This is a very um, emotional conversation. We talk a lot about how Ian feels about a lot of different things, type 1 diabetes and other issues. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. Considering drinking AG1? Use my link, drinkag1.com forward slash juice box. If you want to save 40% off of your entire purchase at cozyearth.com, use the offer code juice box at checkout. And don't forget to follow Touched by Type 1 on Instagram, Facebook, and go see what they're doing at touchedbytype1.org. I have a little time here, so let me remind you that episode 1000 is coming up quickly, and I'm re-releasing it completely remastered. The audio is terrific. Imagine I went back in time, uh, found myself in 2019, and said, hey, you should probably buy Jenny a good microphone for this. Imagine that happened. Well, it kind of did, because it's all remastered. Look for episode 1000 soon. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is sponsored by Omnipod 5. Learn more and get started today with Omnipod at my link, omnipod.com forward slash juice box. The podcast is also sponsored today by who? You want to guess? Guess in your head. Contour. That's right. The Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter. Contournext.com forward slash juice box links in the show notes links at juiceboxpodcast.com when you click those links you're supporting the production of the podcast and helping to keep it free hi my name's ian uh i'm 32 uh and i've been type 1 diabetic for the past 22 years wow interesting 22 years diagnosed at around 10 yep you're 32 now okay any kids or family um i have two stepkids that I'm uh, currently in the process of adopting. Oh, very nice. Any autoimmune or type one in your family line? My great grandpa on my mom's side was diabetic. We're not sure if he was type one or type two. And then I have a cousin on my dad's side who's 10 years younger than me and was diagnosed at the same age with uh, type one. So there's type one on your dad's side. How about other autoimmune stuff? Do you have anything? Um, I have psoriasis. My mom deals with some uh, hypothyroidism, Mm -hmm. but that's the gist of uh, autoimmune stuff in our family. I love uh, you said something just now. It's it's so colloquial. It's probably to your to wherever you live, your area. But your mom deals with a little hypothyroidism, little little touch of it. (laughs) Just just a touch of the the hypo. I love that idea. My mom's just got a touch of the hypothyroidism. <laughs> what does that mean? Is it is it something she deals with that's not impactful on her day to day? Yeah. She does take medication for it. Right. But it's nothing that's ever really impacted her life on a day to day basis. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, you have more than a touch of the type one, I imagine. Just, yeah. Fair <laughs> bit of the type one. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Oh, Ian, I don't think we usually name the episodes in the first 120 seconds, but you're on a strong start here. (laughs) Uh, More than a touch of the type one. Uh, Ten years old, do you recall it at all, the the moment you found out? Uh, I do. We had actually gone to a roast beef chain uh, fast food restaurant. Arby's or Roy Rogers? Arby's. Arby's, go ahead. Yep. Uh, ironically, the one that I started working at when I was turned 16, but we get gotten there five for five, uh, got home as the family and I ate a roast beef, went into the bathroom and puked my guts out, came back out, still starving, hungry, ate another one, puked again. And we were out of roast beef sandwiches and went to the fridge, opened it up. Looked through it, couldn't find anything I wanted, turned to my mom and went, there's no good food in this house. I'm pretty sure at that point she was like, there better be something wrong with this kid. 
<laughs> or or he's yeah he's grounded for the next year because i know how but, much uh, money i spent on all this food in this house <laughs> yep so she had been trying to get me tested for a few months before that because i'd been drinking a lot of water i'd grab one of the big 32 ounce cups and fill it up three or four times in the night and get up and use the bathroom and i thought that was normal i thought everybody just got up in the middle of the night to pee a bunch of times but every time we'd gone to our uh our family doctor it was a fasting test and my blood sugar would be okay so finally after this my mom takes me in uh and says to the doctor like you're testing him right now uh check his blood sugar and he checked it and i was 487 oh gosh okay yeah and at that point our i was not very happy with that doctor looking back he gave us a shot of insulin because it was at the end of the day said go home i'll see you in the morning he didn't he didn't work out for four <laughs> pretty much we went in there uh <laughs> at the end of his office day he gave me some insulin said oh yeah you're diabetic i'll see you in the morning for a little bit of training and so went home came back the next morning and uh gave us like the 10 15 minute rundown of this is your insulin. You're going to take this much at night. You're going to take this much in the morning. These are how many grams of carbs you can eat. Good luck. Wow. And sent us on our way. Happy day. Yep. Yeah. And I was not big on needles at that point. And no, no. As a no, 10 year old, you weren't big on needles. <laughs> for some reason, I didn't like shots. Hey, no kidding. But I remember being on top of my bunk bed and my mom trying to get me to take my insulin and my sister having to climb up onto the top bunk to help get me down to give me my first shot. Mm. Yeah. That's a good corner to hide in because it's it's in the corner and it's up high. So Yeah, you're... you have the high ground. There's nothing on your back. So <laughs> You didn't launch a counteroffensive when they came for you? I thought about it, but I was out of stuffed animals, probably. <laughs> Ian, listen, um, let's do a little trivia. Do you know who the deep voice guy is for Arby's? I know who you're talking to. I do not know his name. You don't know his name? It's Ving Rames. Ving Rames. Actor, who would you know Ving Rames in? Mission Impossible? What else was he in? Oh, God, he's been in so many of those Mission Impossible movies lately. I can't think of the other stuff. Oh, Pulp Fiction. Did you see Pulp Fiction? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right, and so when you said five for five, I can just, that's all I could hear is Ving Rhames going, Arby's, five for five. And I'm like, Jesus, Ian's knocked me off course early on with his <laughs> with his Arby's knowledge. <laughs> well, when you get hungry after this episode, you'll at least know why. Yeah, exactly. Well, I have to record again. It's just going to make me crazy. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I, that, I don't know, like, Arby's is not a huge thing i don't think anymore and yet i can hear those commercials in my head and if i'm doing my job correctly you're hearing this commercial in your head right now the contour next gen blood glucose meter is small accurate has a bright light and an easy to read screen but it's accurate 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 this is my opinion well, let me see. If I said, what's the most important thing about a blood glucose meter? Accuracy, I guess I got number one. After that, bright light for nighttime use. That's that's the second. Wait, is that the second one? I'd be able to read the screen. I want it to fit my hand well. And I guess I would like it to have second chance. To, okay, I want the next gen. That's what, that, that's what you want. The Contour Next Gen Blood Glucose Meter has second chance test strips. A bright light for nighttime viewing an easy to read screen, it fits well in your hand, and it's incredibly accurate. Not every blood glucose meter can say it's as accurate as the Contour Next Gen. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Now here's the great thing about my link. It's all there. There's a button right there that says buy now. It takes you to like six different options where you can buy like Amazon, a bunch of online sellers. Here's the point. The test strips and the meter very well may be less expensive out of your pocket cash than you're paying now for test strips and a meter through your insurance company. That's in, that's completely possible. You should check. 
And if your insurance covers it, well, that's great. Just tell your doctor, I want to contour next gen blood glucose meter and contour strips because I want accuracy. I want stability. I want to know what my blood sugar is. And I want to not have to think, uh, is this right? Am I guessing? Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Go get it now. The, uh, I mean, years, three, four years, Arden has been using a contour meter. They are exceptional. And that's what you deserve. Exceptional. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Whether you get it through your pharmacy, your insurance, or you buy it through cash on my link, contournext.com forward slash juice box is where you go to learn all about it. Arden's getting ready to go back to school. The uh, summer break is over, sadly, and we're packing up her supplies. So we're getting a whole bunch of Omnipods together in a box for her to take back to college with her. And as I was going through the drawer, you you have it, everyone has a drawer, right? Um, supply drawer, getting out Chivo Hypo Pen, test strips from Contour, Omnipods. I started thinking about how long we've had these things and how many of these pumps you know, has she worn over the years? And it's so many. Um, and I can say, like, without hesitation, it's a great experience. It is. I, I mean, tubeless. She can swim with it, take a shower with it, activities, exercise, all with the Omnipod. It's not obtrusive at all. No cords, tubes, or anything like that to get caught on things. And it just works. It works terrific. I, we love it. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. You can get a, a test drive of the Omnipod at my link and you can learn more and uh, even check out your insurance coverage and get started. Omnipod.com forward slash juice box. When you use my links, you're supporting the production of the podcast and helping to keep it free and plentiful. And they've yeah. got to be pretty new, right? Like, they can't be that old if Ving Rhames is, although he's in his 60s, I guess it could be. Anyway, I, I don't want to go down this Ving Rhames rabbit hole. <laughs> Have an hour long uh, podcast about Arby's. Yeah, I don't know if I could do that, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like, wait, was Ving? No. Yo, yeah, no. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm, ac- I'm, I'm arguing in my head about who Ving Rhames is. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I, what a, what a strange a strange discussion to have out loud in front of somebody else without using any words. I'm like that. No, yes, no, no. What? Now you have Ving Rams. Okay. Um, anyway, Pulp Fiction. Um, I mean, he's 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 got a small, very good part in Pulp Fiction. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, all right. So now you're you're in your bedroom. You've you're unable to fend off your sister. I mean. Was she older or younger? <laughs> uh, she's two years older than me, and she's I've always been the runt, and she's always been, like, bigger than me, like, substantially <laughs> larger and stronger than me, so. She drug you down out of that bunk bed. Pretty much, kicking and screaming, and uh, took my shot, and then uh, we ended up going and seeing a diabetes educator, and she was amazing, helped me out a lot. And that's, she was the one who more led the the change to um, grams of carbs to unit insulin. Mm -hmm. Um, And we sort of switched there and then ended up switching family doctors uh, to somebody who was more familiar with type one. And had more empathy, I would imagine. Yeah, Yeah. a lot more. (laughs) So he was great. Loved him. My uh, niece and neck nephew actually uh see him as their primary doctor now right well i mean you know it's interesting i can understand if you're if your gp is not the right person for it like that's fine right you're i mean back then right your pediatrician and but yep. but to just because i have a image of my head of like you with your hand out and him just slapping a couple of needles in your hand and a vial and being like listen count that shoot that good luck and I, even if it wasn't like that that's your memory of it. You know what I yep. mean? And and so 
I do wonder sometimes if, I mean, if you asked me to sit here and recount the moment when somebody explained insulin to me, I don't think I even remember, honestly. Like, I could paint you pictures, like big, broad, kind of like fuzzy pictures of the day with words or, you know, how it went. But I only really remember, like, like moments of it. You yeah, know? I, I mainly remember him giving me the, like, handing me a vial of, oh, I think it was Humalog and Cloudy. Mm-hmm. And giving us a rundown you can eat this many grams at breakfast this much for lunch this much for dinner and then i remember going into my fifth grade classroom and just walking in and standing up there and be like i'm diabetic now which was ironic because we had another type one in my class who was diagnosed in uh third grade you remember what the reaction was from the kid he was just sort of okay i'm not alone now and then uh, his dad was actually great. His dad reached out and was like, if there's anything you ever need, I'm here to talk to you. If your parents ever need anything, because we went to a really small Catholic school. Mm-hmm. So there was like 80 kids from kindergarten to eighth grade. Yeah. So it was everybody knew everybody. Well, that's one. That's I mean, that's did you find that helpful? Did you like take advantage of it ever? It was helpful. Just knowing everybody there was there wasn't anybody in the school that i didn't know but i was listening to your podcast actually yesterday and i heard something you said about catholic schools (laughs) and about finding the girls there Uh, i'd have to say have having been in catholic schools from kindergarten to 12th grade not my experience with the catholic girls (laughs) it's because it's because you were the ones they knew yeah see (laughs) i found better if you Like my wife, if you find a former Baptist preacher's daughter, those are the ones you got to (laughs) find. Oh, that's your experience. (laughs) You need your own podcast if you want to tell that story. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's uh, that's interesting. (laughs) That that wasn't our experience. They just knew you too well to be interested in you. That's all. Yeah. They knew me as the scrawny little guy. So they're like, "Mm, yeah, yeah. it's just Ian. You got to go find people who don't know you. So that you can be uh, whatever it is you say you are, I guess. Yeah. And then you just got to hide the crazy for just long enough for him to get comfortable. <laughs> is that Was that how you handled it? That's how I handled my wife. You, I hid the crazy for just long enough. <laughs> Would you let it out when it was too late? She's like, oh, I like the guy now. Yeah. Well, I waited till I proposed. She already said yes. And then, then she got the crazy. <laughs> it's too late. Now here's the too rest. Late. Here's the yep, rest There's of a it. ring. <laughs> well, I don't think it's uncommon for people to put their best foot forward <laughs> in the beginning. Yep. <laughs> Although uh, that usually does mean holding something back, right? Well, yeah. h- how about that? How old were you when you met your wife? Um, It was six years ago, so I was 26. Oh, okay. And so, yep. I mean, how much of... That's interesting. So how much of diabetes... Do you let her know in the beginning of dating? And then how much do you kind of let out as time goes on? Or do you just blurt it all out at once? How do you handle it? I let her know I was diabetic, like right off the bat, because I have a forearm tattoo that's medical alert. Mm -hmm. So she knew, but she wasn't really involved in anything uh, at the beginning. And we moved in together within eight months of dating. And so... Once she moved in, she started seeing a little bit more, but it was me taking care of it, and she was just sort of there along for the ride. Okay. And now she's gotten a lot more into it because I've gotten to a point now where I can afford the insulin pump and and the CGM, so she follows me on Dexcom, and she's really good at, if she gets the uh, low notification, checking in like, you need something? You want me to grab you something? So, okay. I'm just, I don't care one way or the other, how you have your thing set up, but I'm just wondering, could she figure out a meal bolus? Does she know how to help you if you're too low? Like how much of it does she have? She doesn't really figure out meal bolus type stuff, but she definitely could help me with when I'm low. I've been lucky and haven't had to have assistance yet. 
but she knows where the nasal glucagon is Mm -hmm. and how to use it and everything. So, okay. And she also, I sent her your podcast on low blood sugar. Oh, back when I first started listening and she's like, that's the most I've learned about what to do in a long time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That's good. I, I mean, I like that. I like the idea that there's shareable content that can help like catch somebody up. But it's also interesting that just living with a person doesn't give you that context. And I don't mean like interesting, like, oh, why is she not doing that? Or why are you not telling her? I I just think it's interesting. Like you're living your life. Like you go to work. I imagine she has a job too. And then there's things to do at home. There's kids. And it's not like every moment of your diabetes is a, is a Ted talk, you know? Right. So it just doesn't come up enough for her to actually absorb it on that level. Yeah. 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 Are you comfortable with that? Yeah, I'm okay with it. Um, I've been chronically single for most of my adult life. So it just seems like something that I deal with and I'm okay. I'm used to dealing with it alone. So it's just sort of what's natural to me. Mm -hmm. How involved were your parents? They were more involved at the very beginning, and then it was quickly handed off to me. Because within a year of my diagnosis, my grandpa died of uh, prostate cancer. And then my parents were separated within another year and divorced my freshman year of high school. Okay. So there was a there was a lot going on for them, and it was just sort of handed over to me. And I had a lot of self-hatred and anger over the diabetes. So that held me back for many, many, many years. Can you tell me about that? What what, what do you mean by self-hatred? With everything that went on with my grandpa passing shortly after, and then we were raised Catholic. So it was very family oriented. And my dad ended up having an affair. And my Ian, can I got, stop? Can I stop you for a second? Yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious that you're like, listen, we were raised Catholic, so obviously we were very family oriented. My father had an affair, <laughs> which is not a family oriented decision. <laughs> oh no, it, it, it's because it was uh, so out of character and so out of left field. It threw me for a loop. Yeah, as to what am I supposed to do with my life? How am I supposed to act as a man? Yeah. So with that and then the hurt that it caused my mom and everything, it just, I had a lot of hatred at just getting diagnosed. And then there's no face to diabetes. There's nothing to be mad at. Yeah. Physical to be mad at. Yeah. So when your parents ask you, what's your blood sugar, I'd get upset. And it was the first question was, what's your blood sugar? it felt like they were tying all of me who I am emotionally to a number. Right. And so that caused a lot of animosity towards my parents. Like they became the physical manifestation of diabetes to me and they were what I could take my aggression out on. Okay. Uh, Well, that makes sense. What about, I mean, what about the part where you were mad at yourself? I guess at some point I place, I felt like the divorce and everything was partly because of my diabetes and I never felt good enough. So to punish myself, I just decided not to take care of myself subconsciously and just, I'm going to keep myself on my feet. Like I'm alive, I'm conscious, but I'd ride in the 400s, 500s, and not not feel it, not care. What was the idea behind that? You're going to punish yourself for your parents' divorce? Punish myself for that. Anything I felt lacking in myself, it had to be my fault. So oh, I'm so- here. I'm not going to live a long time. Screw it. Let's just try and carry on like nothing's wrong. So, So you became your very own whipping post basically. Yep. Yeah. For anything, many, many years. Okay. Um, Um, Do you, 
I mean, it's a hard question, but do you think your diagnosis actually had some hand in pushing their marriage apart or is that just your child's head? That's just my child's head. Looking back, I think it was the death of my grandpa that sent everything sort of, I, I'm sure it wasn't great before that, but I think that's what really did it. Yeah. So. I think so. Uh, 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 straw that broke the camel's back kind of a situation. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not like your mom and dad were going along like June and Ward Cleaver and your grandfather died and your dad's like, I'm going to go throw my penis in somebody else. Like nothing like that. It was just like it no. pro- probably a slow destruction. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then that hits you. Do you believe that? Did you live with your mom or your dad? We had joint custody. Um, I was supposed to do 50 50 custody, but I ended up spending the vast majority of time with my mom. Okay. Um, and there were years at a time where I just wouldn't talk to my dad or I'd see him at holidays mm-hmm. because I didn't want to see him. Okay. Did, did your mom know how you felt? Yeah, she did her best to, to take care of me emotionally and physically. Like, I'll give her credit. That woman is a saint. I don't know how she managed to make sure I always had insulin, always had food, always had clothes on my back, roof over my head. But she managed it somehow. Wow. Yeah. Um, but, but about the part about you like how you felt and how you treated her. Do you think she was aware of that or, she, or do you think on her, from her perspective, you were just upset? Like, do you think she had a more general idea of what was happening? Like, Oh, Ian's upset because we're divorced or he's upset because he has diabetes. But do you think she understood like the deeper, cause you're explaining clearly how you felt, mm-hmm. you know, you were angry with everything and took it out on yourself. And like, do you think she understood that part of it? Um, at the time, I don't think she did. We've actually talked about it more recently, and I've explained it to her. Like, this is what was going on. I'm sorry for being a, a dick as I grew up, but this is what was going on in my head. She yeah. thought it was more just uncontrolled blood sugars were causing everything and being a teenage guy, the hormones that go along with that. Do you think that has some validity? I, I definitely do. I'm looking back that uncontrolled blood sugars definitely made me way more aggressive and ready to have those verbal arguments. Mm-hmm. But it was also be fueled. My like rage and hatred would be fueled when it was, we'd have those arguments and then it was the immediate, what's your blood sugar? And then that's because it felt so invalidating. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You couldn't possibly be upset. This is your blood sugar. Yeah. I I don't know if if it's right for everybody, but I mean, for me personally, I can remember back to being in that age. And when that, when those real, like when that, those hormones hit you, it, 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 everything is either aggressive or, or looking for a mate, like kind of like, it just, it feels like you just want you like, I mean, for me, it was like, I looking for girls and, my interactions around other things I were always turned up to a hundred for some reason. Yeah. It was, there's either you're at full stop or you're at full send. Yeah. There's no in between. It's hard to, it's hard to like when, and when it's happening, you, you, there's contextually, you don't understand. And even if you did understand, I don't think you'd be able to go to, to step back out of yourself at, you know, 18, 19 years old and be like, oh, I'm not really upset. This is just the influx of hormones that are making me a man. It, you know, like it's, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd be able to do that one way or the other. But um, just like aggressive interactions and, um, you know, and then, I mean, the just, I don't know for you, Ian, but like the any free time was spent looking for girls. Oh yeah. Yeah. Even when it wasn't necessarily free time, you'd multitask. Yeah. You could, you could ignore an important task if it meant, (laughs) if it meant some girl looked interested a little bit, you know? Um, Yeah. I I don't know. It's hard to put into words. I tried to explain this. My son was getting older. My wife would be like, what's wrong with him? And I'm like, you have no idea. You leave him alone. He's, 
he's on a path. <laughs> so leave him alone. Yeah. And don't knock. Make sure you knock before you go in. <laughs> don't spend, well. Don't stand in front of him. That's for sure. When he's when he's on a when he's on a a tirade or or you know just I don't know. It's interesting. And my my son's a little more uh, mellow, but still, it's it's um it's there. You can just see it. Like, you know, I, I personally don't think that I don't think it completely stopped for me until maybe like 10 years ago. And it just slowed down really more than stopped like that whole, just that, I don't know that aggressive nature of what testosterone is. And you know, as I get older and it goes away a little bit, I miss it a little bit too. Yeah. You know, you're not that old I- yet, but. I feel like it. My back's destroyed, but <laughs> that's what I get for being a landscaper. That's tough work. Yeah. Well, it, it beats what I was doing before. I used to work in plastics. Okay. So I made, I worked in a factory for 12 hours a day and running the machines that make different food cups and stuff. So yeah, landscaping, well, at least I get to see the sky. You go outside. And uh, I, I worked in a factory setting when I was a kid for four or five years. Um, and there was gaps of time in there where I did landscaping. And some of those landscaping days were something. Like it was just you were up at the crack of dawn. And before you were awake, you were bouncing around in a truck somewhere. You'd already loaded equipment onto a trailer, like the freezing cold. Even in the summertime, it feels like it's cold at 6 o'clock in the morning. And... um you just spend your day like doing a job that if you did it at your house, when it was over, you'd collapse. But in this situation, you did it. And then you climbed into a truck and tried to pull yourself back together while you drove to the next place to do it again. Um, And then, you know, they wanted you to work until the last ounce of light. And then you'd go, I'd go home and take a shower and eat something and go to sleep and wake up and do it the next day. Yeah. Yeah. I made the mistake of, doing that and then telling my wife i would put in a patio at our house (laughs) so i'd get home and go start working on the patio it's like i don't have energy for this but i promised the wife make her happy (laughs) and i'm never gonna get to sit on this patio (laughs) oh no (laughs) no i um it it is it's incredibly difficult work i'll never forget when i first got my first job this guy had a tree farm where he was raising these tiny little trees, you know, and it was just acres. And I remember one day he said, Hey, I have something for you to do today. Um, and I was pretty young and I was like, okay. And he dropped me at this field with a, a string trimmer and a can of gas and my lunch. And it was like six thirty in the morning. And he said, uh, you know, I'll be back to get you at the end of the day. And then I just walked between these little trees, just cutting the weeds around each one of them all freaking day. It was, I mean, you have no, it was, it was, it was one of the more soul crushing moments of my, of my young working life. I I remember standing there thinking like, I, I have to figure out how this isn't going to be my reality. Yeah. So anyway, not fun. And I I feel for your back. Uh, (laughs) Does anything help it? Actually, a hot shower helps. That's that's what I do. I'll just go home, take a hot shower, and that seems to make it better. Is it muscular? Do you, is it just tightness? <laughs> yeah, it's just from bouncing around on, on the zero turn all day. Because mm-hmm. we got pretty sandy soil out here. And you get gophers and mole holes, and then you're just bouncing crash, all day. Crash, 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 yeah. My, I'll, I'll tell you, I haven't said this yet. My wife got me a a gravity table for Christmas. It's not as expensive as it sounds. I think it was just a couple of hundred dollars. Um, but you basically, it's a platform. You strap yourself, you strap your feet into it and then just lean back and you can hang completely upside down. Oh, I remember those. It's very relieving. Yeah. It's, 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 yep. it's pretty nice. Actually. <laughs> I made fun of it when she get like, like in her head, in my head, when I opened the box on Christmas, I was like, what in the, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, but then she's like, try it, put it together and try it. And I was like, all right. So you kind of like, you go upside down and you only, and I hang for just a couple of minutes and it's, it's interesting. You have to um, almost consciously let go of the tension in your back. 
like like when you hang upside down, your body tightens up, like it wants to hold you from from expanding. And if you just let yourself like go and let it relax, all of a sudden you feel like you're hanging from a. It almost feels like you're hanging from a hitch between your hips at the bottom of your spine, and then everything just kind of like expands. It's very nice. It's very nice actually. So anyway. It's it's also sitting in my living room because no one knows where to put it. <laughs> <laughs> At least it's not having all the laundry hanging on it. Oh, yeah, that's actually a good point. <laughs> there is nothing <laughs> hanging on it. <laughs> that would make it worse. Uh, anyway, so when you talked about in your notes about mental health issues around diabetes, this is what you were talking about, what you spoke of earlier. Is that correct or is there more? There's that. And then um, I deal with a lot of anxiety and depression. That's actually been getting better as I've gotten my blood sugars under control. But a lot of it was tied to the self-hatred and the poor Mm self-image. I felt like nobody would ever want me because of the diabetes. And I felt like I was doomed to die young, which I know isn't the case now, like logically now, but emotionally, that's what it felt like. Well, I interviewed a lady yesterday in her mid fifties who was diagnosed as she was young and um, engaged. And she described a shift in her life about, I don't want to give it all away because it'll come out near yours, but she described a shift in her life where she became very like focused on getting the things she wanted, like children and marriage and stuff like that. And she ignored not particularly liking some of the people in her life. I don't want to give it all away, but it was fascinating. And that turned into depression and drinking. And so it's funny, not funny, haha, but but interesting that back-to-back days would be with um, a 50-year-old lady who's describing feeling exactly the way you felt. And then you coming along being like a guy in his 30s who talked about it about him feeling that way too. It, it feels very universal, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. Um, it's interesting, you know, that, that a 10 year old boy and a 25 year old girl could pretty much have very similar thoughts after their diagnosis. Yeah. I think it's just one of those, it's such a big change in life, especially when you're old enough to sort of understand what's going on. Mm-hmm. Cause I do remember pre diabetes, like what life was like and how much it changed so quickly. And I think that I didn't have the tools on hand to cope with that in a healthy way. So I started coping it with it by ignoring it and just trying to push it down and not think about it. Okay. And that didn't obviously work for you because it bubbled out in other ways. Yep. I didn't deal with the root problem and then it caused so many other issues in my life, emotionally and mentally. Do you think you've dealt with them or do you think you just are in the midst of dealing with them? And how did you do that? Was it therapy or something you did on your own? Um, Yeah, I'm currently in therapy and I've been work. I think I'm in the middle of working through a lot of my issues. So it's a process and I know it's going to take time and it's, I've learned to give myself a little bit of a break with how quickly I'm going to move through that process, but I've seen drastic improvement in my A1Cs and my control. So it's, I'm taking that as a win. It's not quite where I want it, but we're moving in the right direction quickly. Okay. Do you know anyone else? who deals with similar things. Like I'm trying to decide if like the depression, anxiety piece uh, takes on a similar life in your, inside of your life as diabetes does, because it's an alone thing. Or do you, are you able to share it with somebody? I don't have anyone really close to me that has type one that I talk with Mm -hmm. about it. I'll go on the group every once in a while on Facebook and reach out there, but it's that disconnect. It's sort of like asking strangers 
you're talking to them. So you got to sense yourself a little bit. Yeah. Not that, not that they're not great people. It's just, it, it's different telling a friend something than telling a stranger. Sure. But in your day to day life, there's no one to share with, like, I feel anxious or something like that. Not really. Like, I'll talk to my wife about it. She knows everything that's going on with me. So I'll, I'll talk to her quite a bit. She works from home. So when it's like now and I'm not doing much, but waiting for snow, we get to spend more time and she gets to be a sounding board for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Let's shift gears for a second. Cause you're, you're saying you're waiting for snow because you, you you want to go snow plowing to make money. Yep. Right. Yeah. All right. How did Jeremy Renner hurt himself so badly? Uh, I thought he got ran over by his, uh, his, he's got one of those snow cat things. Yeah. Yeah. I think he was helping pull somebody out and it ran over his leg. It's incredible. Isn't it? Like, it's terrible. Yeah. Like my, my wife tells me he tried to jump in to stop it from rolling. I don't know if that's the, like the story or not. And all I could think, and, and he's hurt so badly. I felt even bad for feeling like this, but I was like, does he not know he's not actually a superhero? And, <laughs> and, and by the way, he was one of the lesser superheroes. <laughs> it wasn't yeah. like he wasn't like Thor. And and, yeah. and I'm like, this is. But I saw an image of him recently, and he looks like he's lucky to be alive. Oh yeah, he looked. I saw his. I think it was a TikTok or something he put up mm -hmm. um, from the hospital, and he looked rough. Yeah. No, no. I. It's not just his legs. That's for sure. Not that that wouldn't be enough, but you know, he, I think it got it had to have gotten his chest cavity somewhere because he looks like he's like literally lucky to be alive. Yeah, and um, just really, I mean, it's terrible, obviously, but it's a it's a dangerous thing to do. Like if you know, like I we used to do that. Oh my god, as badly as I didn't like you know the landscaping, the plowing. Oh my God, you, you go out at night after everybody's like right, like on the first snow, they want you out. So you plow completely overnight. You're doing it forever. I remember this one night we hit a raised sewer cap. And, like, I thought the truck was going to flip over. And then the the plow was broken. And then we were in the middle of the night welding it back together. And, oh, my God. I can't believe you're excited for that. I am sitting around oh. going, like, I hope this happens. <laughs> well, I had uh, the first year I was I started the business and I was out plowing. I had the plow fall off the truck at midnight in the middle of the worst storm of the year. And at that point I was one man show and there's nobody to call for help because it's 1230, one in one in the morning. And yeah. you got to figure it out. That sounds about right. in. <laughs> Do you stand in for just a, a moment? In front of the truck, after you realize what happened, you just curse for a couple minutes and then <laughs> and figure out what to do. There, there was the uh, the very heavy sigh, and then fuck. Yeah, exactly. But it wasn't as bad as when I was in the factory and would lose my mind when things went bad. It's like uh, at, I'd gotten to a point where it's like, all right, this sucks, but it's not going to get fixed unless you fix it. So to get going. no point in getting mad. Yeah, you got it back on. Oh, got it back on, finished out the night. I think I plowed for 16 hours straight that day. Wow. I, I got home and just collapsed. I, listen, I was just a laborer in those scenarios, and I remember making great money on those plowing nights. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When it's good, it's great. And when it's slow, it's really slow. Yeah. No kidding. Well, you, uh, you have to keep going north. Maybe you should go to Canada. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> well, I mean... I have a stepsister who lives in Canada. Okay. So maybe someday we'll we'll try and move to the Great White North. Okay. But. Get closer to the snow. Uh, okay. So uh, what else do we have here? So I'm looking back at your notes. You, you come on the podcast. Well, oh, no. Let me go back to one other thing first. You, you're one of the few people who mentioned in their notes. I always wonder why more people don't bring it up, but just the financial side of diabetes. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, can you talk about that a little bit? Like where the yeah. problems have been for years? It's, it was, I just couldn't afford it. 
there was the insulin was expensive, even with insurance. Insulin was expensive. You'd go to the endo and before you hit your deductible, that's a three hundred dollar visit. And when you're making like twenty four thousand dollars a year, that that hits hard. Yeah. And then you go there and they're giving you a hard time because a you're not taking care of yourself. It's hard to afford the insulin to take care of yourself. And then they would push the pump on me. And it's like, I'd love to do it, but I can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Like I I don't have any wiggle room in my budget to pay for that. It would be, well, am I buying food? Am I paying rent or am I paying for the insulin pump? And luckily uh, back in November, we finally got to a point we hit our out of pocket max and I went ahead and got a pump. So after probably 20 years of trying, I finally got one. Oh, good for you. That's great. Well, so have you ever not, have you ever rationed insulin? Have you ever skipped things because of money or have you been able to make it so far? There's times I've gone and I couldn't afford the insulin that was prescribed to me. So I went to Walmart and I got the, the Novolin, mm-hmm. the their cheap stuff. And I knew it wasn't the best, but it was what I could afford and it would at least keep me alive. Yeah. So well, well, and it, you, you had some, you had some experience with that because you used cloudy as a kid, right? Yeah. Yeah. We did for probably about the first eight, nine months. And then I got on Lantis. It's not very long. I, yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, but I, I guess people like to, to understand like nowadays Walmart actually sells a Novolog as well. It's, it's rebranded Novolog, but it's Novolog. Um, yeah, and they and but they also sell what what um, Ian was just talking about too, which is not the same as your fast acting insulin, and that's where confusion comes in, and it's just upsetting to hear somebody say, "Oh, if you can't afford your Novolog, for example, then just go buy this." It's it's not an apples to apples comparison. It's a you know what I mean. It's 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 a downgrade in your care. And also dangerous because the insulin doesn't work the same way as the insulin you're accustomed to. But I, I don't know. It just it sucks that, that that that's happened to you in the past. Uh, but you were able to get a pump. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sure. Um, I have insurance through my wife's work. And luckily, she's moved out, up in the company and she's doing great. So we hit our out-of-pocket max this year or this past year. And I'm like, you know what? The the endo had been asking about it and pushing it. I'm like, if you can give me a price, which was another thing, it was trying to get an actual number on what it was going to cost. Mm-hmm. Was always holding me back. It's like, I'd love to do this, but if I don't know how much it's going to cost every month, then yeah, I just can't say yes. I can't say yes because I got two kids to feed. They're growing like weeds and constantly growing out of clothes so it's like i need to make sure they're taken care of first and their basic needs are met before i think about upgrading to a pump over uh over the insulin pens has the pump been an improvement for your health or just it definitely has yeah it's been nice to know because i have the tandem and the control iq just knowing i have something in the background that's also working on it yeah. on my blood sugars it lets me breathe for just a minute yeah so it doesn't seem as overwhelming just knowing that it's doing its thing giving me a little bit of breathing room to know if it's not alarming you're okay don't you don't have to sit and hyper focus on it that's not it's a nice it had that has that helped with your anxiety by any chance it has quite a bit, of course. That's it's helped with the anxiety around the diabetes. Everything else is just life's been one thing after another lately, so it it gets overwhelming. Yeah, Ian, that is life. Yeah, it's not going to change if you're waiting for like a moment where it feels like a, a Hawaiian vacation. <laughs> that's not coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just like five minutes to catch my breath because <laughs> we got we got married at the end of 2019 
went on our honeymoon and then COVID hit. Mm-hmm. And then my sister-in-law moved in and she was staying with us. And then uh, last year, it'll be a year in February, she passed away for unexpectedly. She had a brain aneurysm oh rupture. My, oh, my God. So it was very quick, very unexpected. And then we, her son had moved in with us, too. And he was a sophomore in high school. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to finish out high school up here. His dad lives in Illinois. And so we had offered, you know, if you want to finish out high school up here, that's fine. We'll take care of you. So it went from COVID to changing jobs to my sister-in-law passing away to all of a sudden being the parent of a teenager. Yeah. So we're finally seem like we're at a point where we can just. Yeah. Take a break. Breathe. Well, that's good. Yeah. Maybe, maybe you will actually experience a, a letdown. I mean, if you have all that going on, um, yeah. that's, that's really, but it's kind of you to take him in as well. He was a good kid. Yeah. Yeah. He's since moved back with his dad, which is his choice. That's fine. Uh, we just want to do what we could to support him because oh. being 16 and losing your mom is horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I was going to, my examples pale in comparison. Now I was going to say that Arden called the other day from school and she's like, I hit something in the road and my wheel broke. And I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> um, and it's like out of nowhere, like your day's just going along and all of a sudden the phone rings and it's a thing. You know what I mean? You're like, uh, okay. And you stop everything. It's interesting, isn't it? Like, in the course of a normal day, you don't think you have any time to stop, but then something like that happens and you stop. Yep. And it's it's interesting how you kind of draw your lines with your time. And especially with the kids. Like when it's your kid, it's a whole different ball game too. Yeah, there's a checklist in my head. Like when it happened, I'm like, Are you okay? Is anyone hurt? Yeah. Is the car all right? You know, was anyone in the car with you? Did you hit another car? Did you like, you know, and you're like going like, she's like, I just hit something in the road and my, and my tire, like, you know, I was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm like, oh, all right. I was like, well, we're gonna have to get the car towed or, you know, get the tire fixed or whatever. And, and she's like, I've got homework. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, well, you're not doing it now. I was like, now you're going to stand there in the road and wait for somebody to come. And so um, you're trying to like, you know, coordinate the whole thing. My point is, is that, I was on my way to get a sandwich when that happened. I had just recorded two episodes of the podcast that day. And I was like, I'm going to go downstairs and make a sandwich. I was very excited. <laughs> Did you at least still get the sandwich? No, I don't even think I ate. <laughs> oh, well, then when she comes back on break, she owes you a sandwich. Yeah, well, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> uh, you can dream. You can dream. Comes, but when she comes back on break, she's going to sleep and then have things she needs. So, um, but yeah, I mean, my point really is, is that it's sort of a false expectation that our lives are going to be serene at some point, especially if you start involving other people, because then their stuff becomes part of the whirlwind. And then to your point, the kid's stuff is your stuff. You yeah. Know? So anyway, try accepting it. <laughs> that's that's what I've been working on in therapy is acceptance. Good. And Lord, give me patience and give it to me now. <laughs> that's all it is. I mean, you just have to, it's almost like you have to want it. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Like in that action movie when the bullets start flying and one crazy character smiles and runs forward. <laughs> that's where you got to be in your head. <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> Your tires broke. Excellent. I know how to fix this and then go. You know what I mean? So, um, it, you know, and you were talking about insurance earlier and, and money and it is, it can be shocking. I, I got a script filled for someone the other day, beginning in January. And I am so accustomed to getting pumps or Dexcom supplies early in January. Like for, for years, it's just always kind of hit that way. And then I think something happened because we switched suppliers. So we got, a big enough order at the end of 2022 that I didn't need them right away in 2023 for Arden. So anyway, I go to get this prescription filled and the person hands it to to me at the window and she's like, it's 78 something. And I'm like, no, I have insurance. And she goes, that's with the insurance. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I never pay for this. And so I'm confused for a second. 
And then I realized, oh, this is my deductible. I'm so accustomed in the first two or three weeks of January of using up my entire coat, like, like my part of it's gone already. And my out of pocket is usually is taken care of right away. And because we didn't get pumps or something right away, it didn't happen. And I thought, oh God, this is what people are talking about who don't pump, who say that all year long they're paying their out of pocket costs. I'm just used to making one big out of pocket payment and it being over, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I was this year, I was everything that I could get before January 1st refilled. I was like, do it now. I don't care if I need it quite yet, but we're doing it now. All insurance is going to cover it. Oh, well, you have to. I mean, if anyone's listening who has any kind of issues, like you, you should be on your calendar. It should be on yeah. your calendar. December 1st, get everything refilled. Uh, my wife was shocked last year when we hit our out of pocket max. I'm like, hey, baby, I told you, you get with me. We're going to hit those. <laughs> get with me. It's all going to be clear sailing after that. Anything you want. <laughs> You need a Tylenol with codeine? You're going to be free. That's because you're rolling with Ian now. <laughs> Let's ignore the part where we spent all the money already. <laughs> That's what we always do. Just ignore what money I spend and focus on the kids. Perfect. Yeah, the yeah, kids, yeah. they're going to want quarters for popcorn on Friday. Nice. You can buy something for a quarter where you live? That sounds cool. Oh, it's, they do it uh, through their school. Oh, oh They okay. do like popcorn thing so they can buy like a little bag full of popcorn for a quarter and oh the school's shaking the proceeds... your kids down is that what you're yeah. that... <laughs> oh no the kids the school's shaking me down <laughs> they know who's paying for it <laughs> it's like when they do that thing at the end of the year and they're like on monday everyone will dress like this and on tuesday this and wednesday this and th i'm like who's paying for all these costumes Wait, what do you think is happening? And do you not realize that in my life there's a child running around telling me they have to get a flannel shirt for Thursday's dress up day? Like, stop it. I don't I, I would love to be in one of those meetings with a teacher. I'd be like, stop, stop doing this, please. It's not, it's I'm not, just trying to keep the clothes on the kid. Yeah, this is not fun. <laughs> They're trying to strip down to their underwear and run around the house and say it's cold in the middle of winter. <laughs> oh, you have little kids, huh? Yeah, uh, seven and nine. Oh, that's a fun age. Yeah. It's like they run around the house. And I'm cold. Well, go put some clothes on. It's Michigan and it's winter. It's Michigan. It's going to be cold. I'm cold. You're not wearing a shirt. <laughs> My kids like to come downstairs and they're like, it's cold in here. And I'm like, wear something. We well, could turn the heat up. I was like, who's paying for that? Although my son's now in his second week of his first job out of college. And already it was, I don't understand where all the money went in taxes. And I was like, well, let me show you. And um, they, there was a holiday, but he's a new employee and he doesn't get paid for the holiday. So he's like, hey, I have off on Monday. And he's like, but that's not really good news because I'm not going to get paid. And I was like, right. I bet you. And all I could think is he's not going to ask to turn the heat up the next time he comes home. He comes over. <laughs> he's going to be like, it's fine. Someone put a shirt on. <laughs> Now you understand that utilities are expensive. Yeah. No, I, I think he's he's a bright kid. Like he he charted it all out as soon as he got there. But now it's you know, it's a it's an entry level job. It's he's not making you know, he's not making yeah. five five hundred thousand dollars a year. So he's like he's you know, he's like, Let me I obviously I don't have unlimited funds here, so let me, you know, budget myself out. And he's like, I have to work on these days. And I was like, No, I, I know. So Anyway, life, huh? And life. It's always fun <laughs> until it's not. Have we covered everything you want to talk about or what am I missing? I pretty sure that was everything. No kidding. Uh, I wrote that note. Oh, what was six it? months ago. That's months? my fault. Yeah. yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> oh, no, you're all good. Yeah. Wait, you have things going on in your life, too? Dude, I, I recorded the podcast this week. Let me pull up my calendar. I, I recorded the podcast eight times this week Ooh. and it, it was one of those things where I was like, I'm going to take off the first two weeks of January first to get Arden back to school. And then of course my son's job, you know, like you're looking for a job for months, you can't find anything. And all of a sudden they're like, you have to start on this day and he had to relocate. And so on the same day in January, we had to 
start back to school for Arden and start off to where Cole had to go. So we split up. It was like crazy. And then I, we had to get him an apartment, like sight unseen. I had to get him down there, move him in. Like we had to go to Ikea and get him furniture and, you know, pots. He didn't have anything. He didn't have one thing. Right. So, you know, so we're doing all that. And I'm like, well, I took off from recording the podcast. So that's, that's good. And I got to play catch up. And now I'm like, I'm looking at my calendar. There's eight this week and there's two, four, seven, there's six next week. I'm doubling up on my Fridays and Mondays, which are my days off to edit. And I'm, instead of editing, I'm recording two episodes. And I'm like, I'm like, well, what am I doing? Now, listen, that's not landscaping or whatever hard job somebody listening has. Um, but it's, in, it's incredibly time intensive and, and I also want to be fresh to have these conversations as well, too. Like, I I, I don't want to get on and be like, oh, so uh, diabetes, Ian, huh? That's something. <laughs> just one hour of dead airspace. Yeah, me just going, wow, that sounds hard. <laughs> so, you know, you're trying to be awake and rested and everything else. And anyway, I'm not complaining. It's obviously a dream job. But nevertheless, I just want to make sure that, you know, men's episodes are always shorter. I did not realize that. I don't know why, except for Josh, who has more feelings than everybody. His episodes seem to go on forever, which are lovely when he comes on. But no, yeah, men generally come in right around an hour. Huh. They're not as verbose. Well, oh, I'm, I'm, I have a limited vocabulary. And unless I add a ton of sentence enhancers, then... I can usually get things done pretty quickly. Ian, are you thinking of making this podcast like writing a paper? Like, like I got to throw in some verries to get up to my word count. <laughs> well, I'm trying to cut some words out because I don't want you to have to spend hours editing and bleeping stuff out. So uh, I don't, I don't, I, that my podcasts go up pretty much the way they're recorded. I don't edit out content. So I, I do have some questions for you though. Like, when yeah. when you found the podcast, how long ago was it? I want to say it was probably, I had listened to you early on and then I stopped, like I'd listened to a couple episodes and I wasn't in a great headspace at the time. Mm -hmm. And so I listened to those couple and I was like, it, history stuff. And I started listening hardcore, oh, probably back in april just this year or just in the last year yeah okay i i cannot stand silence so i put on my bluetooth headphones while i was mowing and stuff and just listen to your podcast nice and does it help you and if so how it does um just knowing mainly that i'm not alone in dealing with a lot of stuff and then, um, like the pro tip episodes and the defining diabetes, like more understanding how things work mm -hmm. and getting a good basis of what to do or a good starting point. Cause I've been diabetic for 22 years, but I don't have 22 years of experience. If that makes sense, I've been sort of slacking off. Sure. So it's like, all right, like I was. I've been really working on the pre bolusing lately and it's like gets a little frustrating when you can't get it first try. It's like, you've been doing this for 22 years and then it's like, but you haven't, you haven't been working on the pre bolus for 22 years. Give yourself a little grace, correct yeah. what you need to and move on. Figure try it, it again next time. Are you seeing an improvement in your variability? Very much. So I used to be, up and down like i'd go up into the three four hundreds and then shoot down into like the 50s mm -hmm. and i think the last time i went over like 240 was a couple weeks ago and i've cut out the super bad lows good so oh, it's like good. i'll get into the 60s but i don't usually go much lower than that lately excellent so you are you're still pulling it together then yeah yeah oh Nine months ago, my A1C was 12.5, and this last one I had was a dead seven. No shit, Ian, really? Yep. Good for you, man. 
Thank you. Oh, that's, yeah, that's wonderful. I'm trying. My I told my endo my goal is to be in the high fives to low sixes. She's like, as long as we can cut out these like super bad lows, let's go for it. Yeah, so. you're figuring it out. Wow, man, you were. Well, you're not kidding either. Like you, you, you didn't talk around it, but you alluded like you've had diabetes for ten years, right? And or or twenty years, really more. Yeah, twenty two years. And 22. yeah, and and you had a twelve A one C in the last twelve months. Yep. Oh, that's. And great. before that, it was probably, I'd ride in like, the teens before that, and not think much of it. Just whatever. I'm alive and. I'd gotten lucky to this point to not have complications. So I figured, well, I've gotten away with it this far. Might as well just keep doing it. But you don't feel like that anymore. No, now I'm, I've gotten to a point where it's like, I got kids to look, look out for. And if nothing else, I got to do this for them. So that dad's around to see them get married and go to college and everything. Jeez, and you made me sad. Damn it. <laughs> I'm sorry, no. I didn't mean to start off your Friday that I, way. I got chills when you told me about your A1C decrease, and then I realized the rest of the story that went with it, and then you started telling it. And I'm like, oh God, that would be sad. Uh, but I'm happy for you, not sad. I'm I'm thrilled. Like uh what do you think moved you? Like, was it that you were working on your mental health and you kind of got into a better headspace? Is that you heard the podcast and somehow that alleviated or brought something to you? I'm trying to talk to people who might be in your similar situation. Like how can they get started? I definitely think starting therapy and working on the mental stuff got me moving. And then listening to the podcast felt like it gave me the tools to actually buckle down and focus on it. Yeah. So it wasn't like going in, go fix this car and here's, a pair of needle nose pliers and that's all you got to completely rebuild this engine it was all right listen to the episodes and now i got a ratchet and some sockets and get the whole toolkit to focus on my diabetes car and you have the energy i'm assuming because of the therapy to actually use the tools now yeah that's great now there's not that self-hatred holding me back yeah is there anything I could have done inside of the podcast to help you feel like that if you weren't a person who found therapy? Is there anything I could be doing to help people who aren't seeking out like the help that you're getting? I honestly don't know. I never so that's know a either. good question. I just follow my gut <laughs> on this whole thing. So I'm just, I like hearing like it's, I appreciate you sharing this with me because I don't know how to put this. Like, like I'm the guy who made a thing and I don't know how it works. <laughs> Just flying by the seat of your pants. I, I don't, I, but I, it works. I know what it does and I know that it works. And I know that if I fuel it the way that I think to fuel it, it continues to work, but I couldn't rebuild it on purpose. I don't think. <laughs> and, and so I'm somewhere between confused about what it is that I do and marveling at what you just said and that, it, and that some of it came out of this, you know, mm -hmm. you know, so it's a, I'm in a strange headspace when people talk about this, it's possible. I'm trying to figure it out for myself, if nothing else, because you're talking about what you're saying. And I, I'm, I'm feeling very, I don't even know how to explain how I feel. Part of it is like accomplished, but that's not the whole feeling. Some of it's proud, but that's not the whole feeling. Some of it, I just feel lucky to be involved. Um, it's there's so many. I think that's why I can't put it into words. I think there are so many different feelings that come from hearing somebody say what you just said as the person who makes this podcast. And oh. and it's. I don't know. I, I don't know how to. I don't know how to articulate it, which might be strange if people have been listening for a while, like, oh, like Scott ran out of words finally. Uh, but I think I have too many words to make sense of them, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. we'll just, the way I'd say that to my kids is you have big feelings right now. 
I do have big feelings, Ian. Thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Get- Not to treat you like a seven year old. Yeah. Why don't I get a warm piece of toast and go watch television for a while? <laughs> I mean, I think you've earned it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not even going to put my real pants on yet. I'm just gonna, <laughs> just going to sit on the floor. But I'll tell you what: if they still ran cartoons on Saturday morning, I think one day just for fun, I'd get up at five thirty in the morning and go watch Mighty Mouse. I remember doing that when I was a kid at my grandmother's house, and it was wonderful. I would sit down and want to watch the uh, the Robin Williams' genie from Aladdin. Oh, really? Doing the uh, great minds think alike, not. That's, I remember that from childhood. That's your space, huh? That's my space. That, a bowl of Cheerios and sitting on the floor. That was a good Saturday morning. We used to watch. So on Saturday morning for me, it was the Mighty Heroes and Mighty Mouse. And then they'd run Superman cartoons. And sometimes Spider-Man as I got older. But if you don't know what the Mighty Heroes are, if anybody doesn't know what the Mighty Heroes are, I'm sure you can find them on YouTube. But it's just, I don't know. It's like when I try to explain it. Like my son watched um, Top Gun, the original Top Gun the other night. And he's like, hey, I watched Top Gun. And I was like, yeah. I said, what'd you think? He goes, this is a terrible movie. (laughs) And I'm like, what? He goes, it's old. And I was like, yeah, he goes, it's just old. I I didn't like it. And I was like, right. Um, But he saw the new Top Gun and he enjoyed that for what it was. But he saw the old old one. He's like, ugh, like, (laughs) fat. That's like me trying to get my wife. I, I grew up watching like 80s movies, like Uncle Buck and, Mm -hmm. uh, family vacation, Christmas vacation. And I'll start quoting those to my wife. And she looks at me like, I've, I've never seen that. Well, okay, <laughs> go watch it. No, that movie sucks. No. 90% of my vocabulary is movie quotes. <laughs> I'm Just, talking to you from John Hughes films right now. You don't even yeah. know it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you grew up Stop. in the right area. Those John Hughes films must have felt like old home week, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know I try to tell my kids, I'm like, Ferris Bueller's great. And they're like, it's not. We watched it. I'm like, no, it is. And they're like, nah, it's too slow for them. Yeah, you guys, they better watch out. They might get written out of the inheritance. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. First of all, we're going to get some inheritance together. And then we'll worry about <laughs> writing it down somewhere. <laughs> I need about I need about 100,000 more of you to listen to this podcast. Then there'll be some inheritance. Uh, but anyway. Uh, Ian, I, I enjoyed talking to you very much. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. My pleasure. My pleasure. It was great talking to you, too. No, it really was wonderful. I uh, I wish you a ton of luck. You are on a terrific path. If you wouldn't mind in a year sending me an email and tell me how you're doing, I'd, I'd love to know how how it's going. Yeah. No, yeah, put that on my calendar. That would really be wonderful. I, I sincerely mean that, too. I don't say that to a lot of people, but I would love to hear how you're doing. It's because I named the episode so fast, isn't it? No, nah, I don't Just know. Just making your job easy. Well, the biggest problem is, is that we already have a somebody's got the meets title. Oh. So I can't go with the Arby's thing. And randomly calling you Ving Rames is not going to make any sense <laughs> to anyone at all. <laughs> this guy sounds nothing like him. I, I tuned in. I have to be honest with you. I didn't hear it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, episode 483. Jessica no longer has the meets. <laughs> oh. I already have an Arby's theme title. <laughs> well, when I was there, it was Life's Good Under the Hat. <laughs> Life's that was, Good Under the Hat? That Yeah, that's showing how old or how long ago I worked at Arby's. Huh. That was, I worked, I actually saw on my Facebook memories, it was 11 years ago on January 1st was the last day I worked there. No kidding. Yeah. I have to tell you something before we go. Have you ever heard me talk about my friend Mike? who had type I, one, he's passed away vaguely. Yeah. I don't, I don't bring him up very much, but when we were kids, he worked at Roy Rogers. And when you said you worked at Arby's, it made me incredibly sad for a minute. And so I'm I had, sorry. no, no, it's I not, it's I not your fault. Set your day off no, like no, that. it's no, trust me. I'm okay. I, I, I have these conversations for a living. I'm okay. But, um, it, it hit me really hard, uh, because I could picture Mike in that stupid uniform working at Roy Rogers. 
and like stealing like roast beef sandwiches at the end of the day and stuff like that. And, um, and I just thought like, I don't know. It just made me, it, it put you in his space in my head for a minute. I had to separate you guys from myself so that I could talk to you. But anyway, you're, uh, you're doing much better than he was. So, so, uh, I'm, I'm happy for you. I think that's why I care about what happens. So please do let me know what's going on. Okay. I will most definitely. All right, Ian. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. You too. Thanks. Hold on one second. Okay. I want to thank Ian for coming on the podcast and telling me that story. It was really very kind of him. It's kind of all of you to come on and tell your stories, but I really appreciate it, Ian. Thank you very much. I also appreciate the longtime sponsorship of the Contour Meters, contournext.com forward slash juice box. Get yourself a Contour Next Gen blood glucose meter and those second chance test strips. And of course, Omnipod, who's been with me since the beginning, omnipod.com forward slash juice box. I guess with me as a podcaster, as an advertiser, and with my daughter, who's been wearing an Omnipod every day since she was four years old, omnipod.com forward slash juice box. When you support the Juicebox podcast by clicking on the advertiser's links, you are helping to keep the show free and plentiful. I am certainly not asking you to buy something that you don't want, but if you're going to buy something or use a device from one of the advertisers, getting your purchases set up through my links is incredibly helpful. So if you have the desire or the need, please consider using Juicebox podcast links to make your purchases.